What's up everybody and welcome back to another Addicted Fishing video. Today we have a very special one in store, very informative and very fun kind of episode here today. We're going to do more of a tutorial style and we're going to go through 10 different trout spinners and show you which one works best and where it can work best out here on the creek, river or stream. So let's get to the tailgate, let's check these things out and let's get to fishing. So the 10 spinners I picked for today's challenge really are like the 10 spinners I could find. There's probably not more than about 10 or 12 different spinner makers out there on the market. So going from left to right, let's see if I can get all these correct. I have my R&B spinner. I have a MEP spinner. I have a Panther Martin. I have the Old Faithful Rooster Tail. I have a Blue Fox. I have this weird fish thing. I have a Steelhead by Bud spinner. I have a Thomas spinner. I have a Danielson fish thingy. And then I have a Vibrax number two spinner as well and that is what we're going to be using today so my goal is to go from hole to hole and keep switching these things around and see which one fishes best and ultimately which one catches the most fish so let's get this started so the rod that I've chosen for this challenge is one of my favorite ultralights I've fished in a long time. And it's a very affordable one. It's the Akuma SST. This was in the seven foot with a two to eight pound line rating. I have a 3000 a little Kaimar reel on here with my 15 pound addicted enforcer braid. And I love this stuff for throwing these little lures like this because it has such a smooth cast and it goes through the guides so well, especially on a nice rod like this. So Akuma is one of my favorite rods. You don't have to use them, of course, but this is one of my favorite. Uh, and the SST is very affordable. The other one would be the Celilo rod. And then you can really take another step up and go to the guide select pro models of the Okuma trout rods Which are very very nice and have a great warranty with them So what I'm gonna do on that indicted enforcer braid because I don't want those trout getting line shy Is I'm gonna add a 10 pound fluorocarbon to that so I'm gonna do that by using a little blood knot now, blood knot is one way to do this. There's two or three other knots that you guys can use. There's an Alberto knot, there's a double uni, but I like the blood knot because it's quick and easy and it's the one that I'm best at tying. And that I think is the most important part about doing any kind of uni knot where you're tying braid to any kind of monofilament or fluorocarbon is just do the one that you're best at tying and the one that you've learned the easiest. So that's what I'm doing, blood knot. Six or seven times over one side, pinch it off. Six or seven times over the other side, back through my hole and bammy, we're connected. And there you have it, the blood knot. That's a nice strong knot. A good thing to do is wrap it around both hands, give it a good tug. If it doesn't break, it shouldn't break on a fish. Okay, and as we look over here, I wanna see some comments below. What do we start with? I don't know. I'm gonna start with my favorite, the Ulma Mater, the old rooster tail. This is a perfect color. And today, there's a lot of different things that we could catch in this river or this creek that we're fishing. There's trout, there's steelhead, there's salmon, uh, there's cutthroat, there's smolts, there's all kinds of coho smolts and um, little summer steelhead smolts or different little trout that are gonna love these spinners. So I'm gonna start with my favorite one. We're gonna step through the run and then we're gonna start working our way up and down the river trying to find a spot to catch fish and see which one of these things works best. So first rule of thumb to finding water that you can actually catch trout on any of these spinners is finding that trouty kind of water. Obviously we have this big river behind us and it doesn't matter if it's a big creek or a big river, finding the areas that those fish can live and hide and have a great little protective area where food comes to them easily is what's most key. Where you see we have this big river here, I'm gonna wade all the way across and you can see this dark little green seam that's coming down that far bank. That's where those fish are gonna congregate and you can see how most of the current and most of the water coming down the river is shoving up against that bank. There's a foam line, there's shade, there's a, there's a deep green pocket and that's where I wanna focus my efforts first. So I'm gonna wade across the river and start trying these different spinners through this little avenue. Okay, here we go. Cast number one of the day. I'm gonna start my cast right at the head of the hole here. And I'm just gonna slowly work down this thing, trying to cover each little pocket that I can. And, and covering that ground is what's most important a lot of the times, finding those fish and moving to them and not having them move to you or trying to sit there and cast in the same spot all day long is what's gonna make you more effective and actually end up catching you more fish. So fishing a spinner correctly is probably half the battle. A lot of times I see too many people just cast and retrieve, cast and retrieve, and that is not the best way to get these down in front of a fish. The thing about a spinner, whether it's a trout, salmon, or steelhead, is that it's an aggravating presentation. It's getting down in their face, that spinner is flashing in front of their eyeballs, and it's giving them almost no choice but to bite it because it's in their face, it's in their zone, and they're aggressive, they're, they're survivalists, they wanna kill whatever comes in front of them. So the best way to do that is always cast it at either 90 to 45 to you to the bank. So right here I'm casting about 90 degrees straight to the bank. I'm keeping 
my tip low and I'm reeling only enough to where I feel contact for that spinner and I feel that resistance of that blade spinning. And then I'm only reeling enough to make sure I can keep feeling that. I'm not pulling that stuff out of the strike zone. I'm not directly reeling that spinner right back in. I'm slowly following it with my tip, keeping my tip low so that that spinner keeps falling and slowly reeling just enough to make that blade spin and keeping it in the strike zone for as long as possible. And that's what's key. I'm gonna switch to these spinners all day long and we're gonna see which one catches fish best, but none of these spinners work at all unless they are down in the zone in front of those fish. So using that technique, or that 90 to 45 to the bank, tip nice and low, pointed directly at your spinner, and just reeling just enough to feel that spinner blade spinning. You can see that tip of my rod start to bend just a little bit. And then reeling only enough to keep that spinning and keep that action going is what makes these things the most effective. So let's keep working down. I'm gonna give this about another 10 casts and it's time to change spinners. Okay, time for a change. We're going with the Panther Martin now. We're getting into a little bit deeper water. And that's kind of the thing, that should be the thing that you guys take away from this video, is using the different spinners in different types of water is what makes all of them effective. I'm gonna go with my old faithful Panther Martin right now. Cause this water is getting a little bit deeper and a little bit slower. So I'm gonna want something that's a little bit more weighted and a little heavier that will get down quicker and in front of those fish. Whereas the rooster tail, especially the size of the one that I had on, works very well in the faster moving water because it's gonna be able to stay up off the bottom and keep fishing through those bouldery and through those faster sections. So now that we're getting deeper, I'm gonna go with, with the old PM and see if it changes our luck. Okay, no love in spot number one. Let's go find a new hole. Okay, new spot, new ambitions. We're gonna go with a couple different styles of spinners. I'm gonna throw that rooster tail back in my pocket because of course that is my favorite. But we're also gonna grab a totally different style this time. I'm gonna go with the steelhead by Bud. Very flashy, very sexy, very nice. Let's get out there, see if we can find a fish. This thing's gonna work a little bit better in this kind of slower, deeper water because it's heavier and it's got that nice silver flash to it. So when you're fishing this deeper stuff where you have to get it down and in between all the boulders and everything, you wanna go with a little bit heavier spinner, something that's not gonna get kicked around by those boils and those royals from those rocks. And uh, it's gonna get down in those faces of those fish and be good and flashy for them. So here we go, steelhead by Bud. You're up. Moving along through my options. No bites as of now. What I'm thinking those two is we're pretty low in this river system and a lot of times in the summertime like this, you'll see the trout migrate to the upper ends of these rivers where maybe some of the salmon are spawning or where the water might be a little bit colder. So I'm not disappointed yet. I'm not, I'm not gonna lose all hope because we're gonna keep moving our way up in this river system into more of trout country. And again, which might be higher and higher in those river systems, especially if you're fishing in an area that has salmon and steelhead, those trout are gonna follow those salmon to areas that they're gonna be spawning. So here we go. Next option. Blue Fox. Through my options that I've gone through so far, I can say the best ones that I've liked and, and that I've fished the best in water like this, one is this spinner right here that I have on, this Blue Fox. The rooster tail has definitely been, I'd say the most effective as far as getting down into the, into the zone and fishing longest through those little areas. Can't say I like the steelhead by Bud much, that did not fish very well. And uh, of course the Panther Martin got down and dirty no matter what, but I think we just need to put these things in front of some fish. But what I can tell already from fishing some moving water is that the bell body Blue Fox, the Panther Martin and the rooster tail are the most fishable in stuff like this. Well, no fish on the blue fox. Let's move up river.
Now we've made it down to a little slice of heaven here, everybody. And this is much more like what I'm looking for when I'm fishing these mountain streams like this for trout. Something with a lot of broken water, a lot of cover for these fish, because they're only predators coming from the sky. So they want to be able to sit somewhere that they're comfortable, that food is coming to them, and that they're not going to get eaten themselves. So I'm going to start picking my way through these boulders. I'm going to stick with my blue fox spinner here, my little yellow one, and I'm going to start working my way through this boulder patch. And if I don't get one, I'm going to switch to a different spinner and try it all over again and work my way through. And I'll be very surprised if I don't find a trout here. Work my way up, go right behind each one of these big boulders. Make sure to keep that blade spinning the whole time and just work it through every little pocket I have available to me. The one right back here. Ooh, that looks good. That looks really good. Let it just swing back behind this boulder. Sit right here in the dark zone. I just had one just slammed it okay I got to get it right back in there that was the perfect cast got it right in that fast water I pulled it over here into this little bit of the soft water area come on find it again I missed it that time I was a little off on my cast oh there he was again son of a gun he chased it down that time okay I got to go a little bit closer on this cast right there that's the cast come on blue fox come through Dang, oh, oh, there he is, I got him, got him. Oh, he came off. Oh, proof though, you all saw it. I saw it, little saw it. First fish on the blue fox in the fast water. We're going, we're looking good. Oh, there he is, oh, dang it. They keep coming off on me, that's all right. We found their number. We found their number, we found the spinner that's working. I'm gonna make one more cast with this and then I'm gonna switch to a different lure. Dang it. Got one on the blue fox. Time to try another one. I think we might go back to, let's go back to the, the rooster tail here. Now this can be a very good way of switching up and finding the best things that are gonna work and confuses those trout. You don't wanna get them used to just one lure. You wanna be throwing different things at them. Give that hole a little bit of a rest if you did get a bite and you, and you spooked them a little bit and then switch up your lure and get right back in there with something different. Okay, here we go. Nada. And this rooster tail is doing a really good job of staying down in the strike zone. Again, if I'm fishing a spot like this and I start to see that thing get kicked up to the surface because of all those hydraulics from the rocks, I wanna make sure to switch to a spinner or, or something that's either heavier or something that's a little more hydrodynamic that's gonna drop down to the bottom and stay in that strike zone. Okay, one more cast and we're moving on. Okay, here we go. Find ourselves another little sex pot. Beautiful little spot. There should be a trout in here. All we have to do now is keep switching up our spinners and find what they want. I'm noticing this rooster tail already is getting kicked through that little zone pretty quickly. So I might be switching up to another spinner here really quick. I'm gonna do one more cast with it and then change my presentation. Seems like those boils are a little too heavy for this spinner, so I want something that's gonna be getting me down a little faster. Okay, one more to the far side. I'm putting on a new spinner. Okay, changing it up. Let's go with something crazy here. Something that I've almost never used before. This one kind of has a fly look to it, has a little flashiness, has like that kind of metallic look to it, like a normal little bait fish. Might piss something off out there. But one thing's for certain overall, that this thing is really heavy. So it's gonna get me down in that turbulent water, hopefully right in front of the fish. Now this one I'm not getting a whole lot of vibration from, and I think it's the style of the blade. 
This is more like a Colorado blade more than a French blade. And those French blades at times I feel work a little bit better in the moving water like this. So I'm gonna keep giving this Colorado blade a try, but I can already tell this isn't getting the thump that I want in this fast water. Okay, moving down into the main part of this hole. Let's see if there's any trout living in here. I'm gonna start my first cast, not quite too far. I wanna be able to work this inside to get these fish that might be closer to me first, rather than casting all the way across the river, potentially hooking one, and then spooking everything that's in here on the near side. A little bit further. Oh, that was something. Something smashed me right there. Something hit me right there, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, nothing on the fishiest Maximus spinner. Time to switch up. I'm going with the R&B. So this one's a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier. Definitely gonna be getting down into that strike zone a little faster, and I'll be able to fish it in, in a little more a little more accurately behind each one of the pockets and boulders because it's not gonna be affected as much by the current. So we got a dual color blade, we have it gold and silver, the old double treble. Let's give it a shot. Now you can see already the difference in that, that um, French blade compared to that Colorado blade. You can see just by the action on my tip how much more that blade is spinning and catching the current and creating a little bit better action for those fish. You can see that weight on the end of my line. You can see that blade flashing really, really aggressively out there. And I think that's what's gonna make these fish bite a little better rather than such a subtle presentation. There he was, son of a gun. Ooh, that one felt heavy too. That might've been a steelhead that just grabbed this or a really big trout. Let's get it back over there. That was very, very fishy. I got slammed right there, ladies and gentlemen. Right there. Dang it, first cast. And let that be said, a lot of times, especially when you're switching around lures and presentations, always have your guard up on those first couple casts. Many, many times when you're fishing spinners in any kind of water, whether it's for any species of fish, those first three casts are gonna be the most important. So never let your guard down and always be prepared on those first couple casts for a fish to bite, even if it's in a place you don't think there's gonna be a fish. Got him, everyone. Got him. Got him. On the R&B. On the R&B. It came through. It came through. Oh, and there he goes. Well, let it be said, the R&B worked. That was a green with the double trouble blade. A little gold, little silver. First good fish of the day. That last one was pretty small. That one was about six inches long, but it worked. Time to change. See if another one works. Okay, now that we got one on the R&B, we've come to a new spot and it's time to get weird. And what I mean by weird is weird. We're doing this little MEPS with a little fishy thing on it. Who knows what's gonna happen. But the, my, my goal on this video is to go through and try all 10 different methods or all 10 different spinners and see if we can catch a fish on them. I know which ones are my favorite. Once again, I've kind of said it over and over again throughout the video. The rooster tail and the panther martin are hands down two of my very favorite spinners out there. But it doesn't ever hurt to try some new stuff. Like I always say, being versatile and trying new gear is what makes a good fisherman a good fisherman. Not, you, not being that one trick pony that only uses one certain kind of spinner of one color and goes to the river every day and tries to catch fish. If you go and you have that versatility and you try new things, ultimately in the end, you're gonna learn a lot more and you're gonna catch more fish. So let's see if this weird fishy thing works. Okay, here it goes. First cast with a weird fishy thing. Oh, 
Oh, I got one. He's chasing. I got him. Oh, God. That thing clobbered it. The one I expected to work the least just got a fish. I think he's going to come back for it, though. That thing chased it down from a half a mile away. Let me get it back out there. Oh, there's one right there. I can see him sitting there. I can see him sitting there. Didn't want it. I can see a big fish sitting right there in front of me, you guys. This is going to be a great test to see which one of these spinners works the best. Okay, it's going to go right in front of him. Didn't want it. Looks like a really nice rainbow trout. Okay, I'm going to try one more cast. Didn't like it. Okay, I'm going to try one a little bit further and then I'm switching lures again. Okay, this is gonna be a great attribute. This is gonna be a great test to which one of these spinners is gonna work best, you guys. I'm gonna get rid of this one really quick. I'm going with the maps. I'm going straight to the maps. He's not moving at all. He's just in his little lane there, just feeding away. Looks like there might be a couple of them. Okay, here we go. Maps engaged. Didn't turn at all. Oh, he went right for it. He didn't grab it though. Okay, this is exciting. This is exciting. That's a really nice trout, everyone. This might work. Oh, one chased it down. There's a lot of trout right here in front of me, everybody. I finally found him. It's taken a lot of searching today, a lot of miles driven, but I think we finally got in the fish. Okay, this is the, the telltale didn't move. One thing I can definitely say so far is the MEPS has a really good action. I'm getting a lot of good vibration out of that spinner blade. It's getting down there quick and deep even for how small the spinner is. Oh my god, just had one chase it again. Man, there is something about the commi commitment of these fish today. They're going after the spinners, they're absolutely hammering them, but they're not committing to them and actually getting stuck by the hook. So something is definitely weird. I think it's gonna be a color thing. We're gonna have to change up and there'll be one thing all of a sudden, I feel like that these fish are gonna really start biting. Okay, I'm gonna move down just a little bit. Or maybe let's change one more time before we do. We're gonna go to the weird double spinny thing. This is a Thomas, the Thomas double blade. Let's see what the Thomas double blade can do. Weird little lure, two blades on it, some gold. Let's see how it works. Very interesting action there. I like it though. I do like it. Oh, I had one on the double blade. Come on, come back for it. So, so far what I'm seeing is a very similar reaction from all the fish. Every fish is biting this stuff, but what I'm noticing is that a lot of them aren't committing. So I'm wondering which one is gonna draw that line, which lure is gonna actually get those fish to completely smash it and hold on to the hook. Okay, the, the Thomas didn't get them. We're gonna try one more, one more option here. And it's the little Vibrax blade. Just the silver Vibrax, old faithful. No color, no flash, just the old silver number two spinner. Let's see if old school gets it done. Got him, got him, got him. Oh, on such a unique, oh, ho, 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 ho. such a unique style too. I put the weird one on, the little the little fishy magnet one that had the little rubber fish on it. I could see a trout sitting under the log. The, actually, the spinner had no action here. So let that be said that sometimes it doesn't really take the actual spinning action to catch one here. But I caught the first fish of the video. Come on, let's put him to hand. Let's put him to hand. 
It's a really nice rainbow here, everybody. Really nice rainbow. Oh, he's in some line. Okay. Oh, what a beauty. What a beauty on the least, on the least attractive lure we have. Wow, so crazy. A beautiful hatchery trout. Rainbow, nonetheless, on the goopiest lure in the box. <laughs> I still love your rooster tail, but I might have just found my new favorite. See you later, buddy. And there it is on the goofy fish magnet. I think that might have had something to do with it. I've been losing a lot of these fish, and I can't really tell why, but who knows? <laughs> it worked. Well, last thing on the list to do is rate these bad boys. And I'm gonna go through a one to 10 system. I'm gonna go with my favorites first, fishability second, and third, all out, just effectiveness. So I have to say, number one for fishing for trout, I have to go with my good old faithful rooster tail. But the one that caught the most fish today was the R&B spinner. So I have to go a pretty much a draw between the R&B and the rooster tail. Rooster tail obviously has to come in second place for the amount of fish hooked today. But the MVP of the day has to be the old wiggly tail meps. Um, this one really surprised me guys. He, he was the underdog. He came from behind and he won This is the actually the only one that landed the fish and I would have bet I would have been a losing man if I would have put money on if this one would have caught fish at all so This is our MVP for the day. Of course my very favorites are the uh, the old PM the Panther Martin the rooster tail the blue fox actually did pretty well too we had quite a few fish bite this one but the ones that didn't do well I'd say my least favorite ones of the day were the bud spinner the steelhead by bud the meps fished very well but didn't get any bites and this guy sadly comes in last place with the old fish tastic and the fly tail but let it be said you saw the versatility in all these spinners today and you saw how each one of them fished differently in different water but all of them got a bite and pretty much all of them caught fish so let that be said for when you guys go to the store and go to shop before you go out on your next trout adventure all these spinners are going to work but some work better than others given the situation if you guys want to see more fun trout tutorials just like you saw here today go up here and click this link to this next video go down here hit subscribe turn those bells on please give this video a thumbs up and comment below and you can be the comment of the day just like this person right here thanks so much for watching everybody you stay fishy We'll see you out there.